Hello, this is Matchy of Matchy.com. Um, this is my first video, so I'm going to try and keep it simple and do something pretty easy. Um, what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to make sound effects um, using the Pathfinder tool, or using the Pathfinder tool to help you make sound effects. Um, this is pretty easy. I, Pathfinder tool is not something that everybody uses, so but I, I find it very handy and I use it. Um, every day, so I thought maybe I'd show you how I use it to make sound effects. And what I apply here um, is will be useful not just for sound effects, it'll be useful for lots of different things in Illustrator, but I'm trying to keep it uh, comic book related here, so um, I'll show you how to make sound effects for lettering your comics. So first thing I do is I go over here and I hit the type tool, and I'm going to type in my sound effect it might be uh, not a book. Boom. Um, you might be copying and pasting it from the script. I don't know, but I'm I'm not working in the script right now, so I'm just typing it in. I'm um, going over here to the selection tool, and I'm just gonna hold shift and drag that open there just to make it bigger, mostly for your benefit. Um, I can also zoom in, but I thought. The purpose of video zooming in and out is probably a pain in the butt. So uh, then I'm going to pick a new font for this. Um, I'm going to use a font called Bada Boom. I get it from Blambot.com. They have uh, a lot of cool free fonts out there for independent comics people to use for free. Um, a lot of good paid fonts there too, actually. So if you want to check that out, actually Bada Boom, you'll probably find a lot of on a lot of those free. Uh, font down download sites. So anyway, once you type this and you've selected your font, um, what you do is well, normally I would hit Shift Control or Command Command Shift O to create outlines. But since I have a video here, I'll show you where it is in here. So you go under Type, Create up uh, Create Outlines. And what it does is it takes it from being type and changes it into like an outlined object. The next thing I do is I would ordinarily again hit Control Shift G, but here we're going to um, just go under Object to Ungroup, and what that does is um, before I'm just going to hit Control Z. Before when we select it, obviously it's a group. And when you move it around, um, it moves around as a group. Uh, when you ungroup it. Um, then you can select each piece individually, and the reason why I like to be able to do that is um, because then I, I'll take different objects here and I'll just resize them. So I'm holding shift and just transforming that. And so, and, and with different sound effects, I do different things. It's, it's a way of customizing it. I mean, a lot of people can go and just grab the font and write boom. Okay. But the reason why you're watching this tutorial is probably because you want to do a little bit more than that. So you maybe have the same font that a lot of people are using. You see this font. This font now is being used quite a bit. I'm almost about to not use it anymore. But I do. I do really like it. It's really good for the comments, but it's almost getting overused. So anyway, I just do that. And you can do a number of things. Sometimes I make them, you know, just offset or all do some some other crazy things which I'll show you probably in another tutorial but for now what I do is I just resize them and the key thing here is I'm, I'm making them touch so they become kind of all like one graphic so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cop, copy this so I'm just hitting alt making a second copy of it and this is just for demonstration purposes so um, this is where the Pathfinder comes into play now the cool thing about the Pathfinder is if I want to do like a nice outline on this, I mean this is cool on its own. But, you know, if I want to do a nice outline on this, um, here comes the problem. Whoa, what's what's all this here? Here, there's all this overlap. Or even if you're like, okay, well, that I'm going to fill that in. Okay, but still your letters are kind of overlapping. It looks kind of, um, you know, I'll be honest, it looks kind of crappy. So. Um, 
what I do is I come over here and I select the whole thing. So this is your example of what not to do, and up here is going to be your example of what to do. So I select everything. So you can either do that, but, well, I would just drag and select all, or you can just hold down shift and click on each one. Um, so, in any, any, any case, you select them all, and then I come over here to the Pathfinder, which is what we're learning about, and we're going to go to the first shape mode here, which is Add Shape, Add to Shape Area. So then I hit, click on that, and then I click on Expand, and it makes it in one shape. Um, sometimes I think that some versions of Illustrator, you don't even have to click Expand, it automatically expands it. I don't even know why you wouldn't want it expanded. There's probably a reason, but I, I've never had any use for it. So now it's all one object, and the cool thing about that is, is that when you go to Outline, it's one outline object. Pretty cool, huh? So then when I take it even a step further, I'll just fill it in white. I go over to my stroke palette, and I'll just beef up that stroke. So that looks pretty good, four point looks good. Now, this is not looking so hot. And what I do here, a lot of times, is it all on the stroke palette, you've got where to align the stroke. And it defaults to line stroke to center, so that stroke is aligned along the center of the line. So that means half of it will be on one side of your, your line, and half of it will be on the other side of your line. And there's also a line stroke inside, and then what I'm going to use, a line stroke outside, to do that. And boom, it looks good. Boom. So there you have that. And then while I have you here, I know I'm supposed to just just showing you the Pathfinder, but I thought I'd show you one more step I usually take. <coughs> and this is, you know, this is still just a pretty basic sound effect. It's not nothing fancy here. But um, next step I take is I'll click on this and I'll hold Alt down and Alt, and I'll drag another one. The other thing you do is you just copy and paste it. It's pretty straightforward. So I take this and then on the inside, instead of white, I'll put black. And I'll kind of move it back over here to create like a, a quick drop shadow, a solid drop shadow. And we'll just arrange and send to the back. Let's see. I use it. I'm usually do key commands. So, but to show things to you better, I should probably not do key commands all the time. So I'll, I'm sending it to the back. Send to back. And there you have it. You got a nice, nice drop shadow on there. This will look really good in a black and white comic. If you're doing a color comic, you can, you know, do something cool, you know, the outline. I don't know. You can maybe make like your outline. I'm just doing something really quick here. Let's bring it in my swatch palette. Maybe make the outline orange and the backdrop red. Boom. Oops. Maybe you're doing something like that. I don't know. Anyhow, anyhow, there you have it. I'll pull this up for you so you can see it. Boom. So there you go. That is your first tutorial for matching here. Um, you can see more video tutorials probably in the future at matchy.com or here on my YouTube page. Um, and I also do done a lot of written tutorials that you find on at matchy.com, although I'm, I think I'm going to move more towards the video area because it allows me to work faster and and, and show it more clearly. I'm kind of long-winded when I type. So, yeah. Okay, so come check it out. And thanks for watching. And next time I'll be back. I don't know what I'm going to do next, but it'll be cool.